my dear students welcome back to this mini hs school i believe you are all happy and safe at home once again welcome you all back to this social series class so today we are going to start a new chapter and we are going to end the chapter today that is only the chapter not the exercise or let's practice section so because we are rushing with the portion so fine let's go with the flow so today the lesson name is that is chapter 8 some famous people that is chapter 8 some famous people so before getting into our class let's do a warm up exercise so today's warm up exercise is like like you have to write that's our warm up exercise <clears throat> so what to write yes you are going to write about your a role model yes we all have role model not all <clears throat> some people may have role model and others may like inspired from some inspiration or inspired by someone so you are just to say me like with your writing that who is your role model or who is your inspiration role model in the sense there is a vast difference between role model and inspiration so role model in the sense the total the like head to toe everything the person do we get inspired from there and we consider them as our role model but inspiration is different like a part of their thing the part of their duties may inspire us and we consider them as a inspiration to us so there is a difference between two so write down there uh, who is your role model who is your inspiration you can write down and you can send me that fine so this is all about your today's warm up exercise so next let's move into our class directly so first our procedure is like reading and explaining reading and explaining so obviously you need your students book please take your social students book is yes, fine please uh, take your social students book take page number 74 so here we are going to learn like a uh, ancient period medieval period and present time so famous people from ancient period like one or two then famous people from medieval period and then famous people from present time so three part so fine uh, let's get into that to take page number 75 and i'm going to read all of us have one or more whom we consider our role model sometimes these people influence the thoughts and actions of a lot of people around the world and we call them famous people they are respected for their achievements in science art politics or other such fields let us discuss some people who have brought about social and cultural changes in our country during different periods of history so here they says that role model role model in two famous people that is uh, maybe a common like mutual role model sometimes i may have a role model in my mind and my friends will also have the same role model in with them or like or in their mind and my teachers may have the same as the same role model they are considering the and in their mind and you students is also considering the same role model so now we all know that same person right we are or considering him or her as a role model so we all know that a person right we all know that particular person so hence he is called as a famous man or famous uh, female like famous woman so we can consider like that yes so here comes the word famous in the codes like famous word comes like this so the a person known for many other people not only for particular uh, society a particular area he may know for many wa- world wide range so we are going to see people from history history in the sense past present and in between so past present and in between so three that is medieval so today we are going to see about that so next uh, let's read the next part before that famous people can from any field clear fine 
famous people from the ancient period first ashoka ashoka was the third ruler of the mauryan dynasty he ruled over three fourths of the indian subcontinent he reigned from 273 bce to 232 bce his reign was famous for peace and prosperity so his uh, reign was famous for reign in the sense era which he ruled peace and prosperity then his greatness comes from the way he lived and looked after the well being of his people it is because of this he is often called ashoka the great so he is often called like ashoka the great according to various sources it is believed that at the beginning of his reign ashoka was cruel and ruthless king it's very important to note next what happened then he fought many battles and brought a lot of religions under his rule it was after the kalinga war that ashoka begins to follow buddha's teaching so here comes a religion or a religion wise man buddha it is buddhist religion so next the suffering and misery of the people and the loss of innumerable lives in the battle changed ashoka ashoka wished that the people in his empire would also follow the teachings of buddha he is appointed officers to spread buddha's teachings across his empire many pillars with inscriptions were built through these inscriptions he was able to spread his message to the people once ashoka started following the teachings of the buddhism he led a simple life and stopped hunting he made sure that medical care for humans and animals was provided throughout his empire he mentioned in his inscriptions that all religion should be respected that's very important thing if you can please mark there all religions should be respected next in honor of his vision the dharma chakra on the ashokan pillar has taken a central place on our national flag the lion capital of ashoka at sarnath has been adopted as our national emblem so fast is all about ashoka so ashoka ashoka chakra his chakra his emblem why we can see in our national flag so now we are going to we all know that who is ashoka that we are going to see here he is the third king of mauryan dynasty he is the third king of mauryan dynasty he ruled between 273 bc to 232 bc so bc in the sense before common era so before birth of jesus christ so here his uh, his rule his era his reign was known for peace and prosperity but there is a story behind that but people who are saying that love through writings they said that at the beginning at the beginning of his reign he is really cruel and ruthless uh, he doesn't have any kind of a uh, peace of, of inside him or outside him he is actually cruel king that's all but what happened is after kalinga war uh, something happened to ashoka what happened he learned he got to know about the teachings of buddha so he got to know about the teachings of buddha so he started to spread the buddhist thoughts and uh, that view their view buddhist view and thought and after that he became himself in self in self of himself he became so kind peaceful and very prosper him he thought of that that battles he fought many battles but after the kalinga war he started thinking that many people are losing their lives yes because of battles and war so he thought of quit that battles and wars so after that he started spread the teachings of buddha so but the important thing that felt that i inspired see all religion he uh, he doesn't mean that only buddhists have to develop no 
he respected all religion he respected he gave respect to all religion that's very important even though he is spreading buddhist thoughts and teachings he respected all religion so he he is okay with all religion so after that to this is a very good quality of ashoka that i felt so after that what happened to 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 honor him to honor him or amend our people our indian people who have made the himasa his chakra emblem and that our national flag that also mean that we respect all religion okay so next part let's read here aryabhata aryabhata was a well known mathematician and astronomer he was born around 478 ce he wrote aryabhatiya which is a collection of detailed information about mathematics and astronomy the book gives details of different units of time it also talks about a method to find out the position of plants uh, on a given day Aryabhata correctly mentioned that the Earth rotates on its axis every day. He also proved that eclipses occur due to shadows cast by Moon and Earth. Aryabhata's work is studied by mathematicians and astronomers all around the world, even today. Astronomer means a scientist who studies the sun, moon, stars, planets, and etc. So here next is about from uh, like new old age. Yes, uh, it's about Aryabhata. Aryabhata is a mathematician and astronomer. Mathematician in the sense we know that astronomer in the sense one who studies about stars and moon and about solar system. So he born between around 478 C. That is common era. It's almost in the beginning. And he wrote a book named Aryabhatiya. It's all about. It's a collection of about rules and regulations regarding to mathematics and more things about astrology. So he he uh, even in that time, like 478 C. he found many important things even though we don't have very technical things and instruments to uh, to detect or uh, mention many things about solar system those times we don't have any specific techniques and instruments but aryabhata with his knowledge and skill he found many things and he also wrote many books regarding that like he collected those things in one book that is aryabhatiya now you can say maths as well as astrology fine yes so even today he is famous for his book he is famous for his rules and regulations he, he has his own rules and regulations so even today mathematicians and astrologers study his book so it's a great privilege that we have a man like aryabhata yes it's a privilege to us fine So this is all about Aryabhata. It's from uh, famous people from all the times. So next, we are going to see about famous people from medieval times. Famous people from the medieval period: Akbar the Great, Jalaluddin Muhammad Akbar was the third Mughal emperor. He ruled between 1556 CE and the 1605 CE. He expanded his empire through. a series of battles and conquests however his success as a powerful ruler goes beyond his victory in battles he befriended the defeated defeated it's a very important thing you can mark their defeated hindu rulers that is rajputs um, especially rajputs defeated hindu rulers especially rajputs okay Rajputs and other Hindus were given high posts in his empire. He also encouraged all form of art and music. Akbar made the administrative system of his large empire very effective. He encouraged poets, scholars, and other artists to perform his court. So, poets, scholars, and other form of arts he encourages. Next. During his reign, the Mughal style of art, painting, and architecture flourished. His, uh, many historical monuments were constructed during his rule. Some of them are Agra Fort, Faithpur Sikri, Buland Darwaza, and Humayun's tomb. Akbar is regarded by many as a great ruler because he encouraged Hindu-Muslim unity. Next is all about Akbar, Akbar the Great. That is his full name is Jalaluddin Muhammad Akbar. We all know that who built Taj Mahal. 
who built Taj Mahal was built by Shah Jahan and yeah Akbar is the grandfather of Shah Jahan fine so clear yeah Akbar's son is Jahangir and Jahangir's son is Shah Jahan okay fine let's see See, he rules in between 1556 and 1605 CE. And the important thing is, he encourages all forms of art, like poets or scholars or art, effect, paintings, architecture. He encouraged. And the other more important thing is, he's also a good person, like a good human being. How comes in the sense? He are also the same. Like, he's like Ashoka. Like Ashoka the Great. Akbar the Great is also the same like him. Like, he encourages unity between Hindu and Muslim. So, yeah, uh, in those battles and through battles, he defeated many kings and many rulers. But the thing is, he befriended him. Befriended him means he made friendship with him. He gave good position for him in his court. Usually what people do, what kings do is like, after defeating a king or an emperor, emperor, he used to put them in jail or like a cell but what about Akbar he never did that what he did is like he made a good friendship with them like Rajputs Hindu rulers like he made a good friendship with them there comes a unity between Hindu and Muslim so he also encourages a unity between people and also he encourages many art forms so there are many monuments uh, like many article facts well from those times his time his reign so let's move to the next. Next is other man from medieval period that is Raja Raja I. Raja Raja I reigned from 985 CE to 1014 CE. He was a very powerful ruler at the Chola dynasty of South India. South India. Next. He was an able administrator and won many battles. He began to establish his power with attacks on other dynasties in South India. He occupied the Gangavadi territory in present-day Karnataka in 1996. He got conquered Kerala, which was ruled by the Cheras. He brought the northern part of Sri Lanka under Chola rule. By 1014 CE, Rajaraja Mal had acquired that Lakshadweep and Maldives Islands were the valuable acquired from the battles he built a great Brihadishwara temple at Tanchu. Now Tanchaur. After Rajaraja first he sent Rajendra Chola first became the ruler. He was succeeded by many rulers. The Chola dynasty finally declined in 1279 CE. So next is all about Raja Raja first. He is a Chola king. Like Chola, Chola king. So he not that Cholam, it's Chola king. So he reigned between 985 C to 1014 Z. His ruling time is like 985 to 1014. And he ruled most of the regions in the South India. So he is a South Indian he Tamil king. Next, so what happened is like, he is a very good king. He ruled the people with care and love. And the other thing, during his reign, there is a peace, peace remind. And he conquered many things, conquered many areas. He became a very flourished king those times. And with the help of his the flourishments and with the help of the, those things he got from the battles, he built a temple that we know, Tanchi Periyakoil. Yes, Tanchi Temple was built. The, the work and the effort was took by Raja Raja first. Yes, so this is a very important thing about Raja Raja first. So his reign declined in 1279, and after him, his son Rajendra Chola first took hand over the things, but he is not quite successful as his father. So the dynasty ends in 1279 CE. But Raja Raja Chola, till today, it's a very good monument in South India. 
yes wedding historical monument so we are learning many things day by day we are getting many new informations about the tanchu temple that is the tanchi periya koil so is a right great privilege to us tamilians so that because or happened because of raja raja first so let's move to the next part next is famous people from the present times mother teresa mother teresa was born in skopje macedonia in 1910 she learned english and bengali when she came to teach in darjeeling in 1933 she became a nun and chose the name teresa after teaching for many few years in calcutta she established the missionaries of charity in 1950 It is an organization that takes care of people who are hungry, homeless, aged, poor, and crippled. Okay, let me explain with it here. So she born in Skopje, Macedonia, in 1910, and she learned. She came here to Darjeeling in uh, uh, between 1925 to 1931, and she learned English and Bengali for the benefit of the people who are living in Darjeeling. In 1931, she became a nun. Nun in the sense, Kanya's three. So unmarried spinster. Next, she became a nun and chose the name Teresa. The her birth name is different, and she chose the name Teresa. After teaching for a few years in Kolkata, she established the missionaries of charity in 1950. See, she established missionaries of charity in 1950. Then, it is an organization that takes care of people who are hungry, homeless, aged, poor, and crippled. She also established Nirmal Hrida in 1952. Both organizations grew with the passage of time. So, she established two charities. Next, with more jo people joining to help the poor. She continued her work and contributed to the welfare of the poor people until her death in nineteen ninety seven. So Teresa born in nineteen ten and died in nineteen ninety seven. Mother Teresa received many awards and honors. Some of them are Padma Shri, Bharat Ratna, Ramon Magsaysay. Award for peace and international understanding, and Mother Teresa was the fly assigned by Pope Francis at the Vatican in 2016. Mother Teresa is known for her charity work, her mind to help people, like sharing love, helping people. She is. She became. She dedicated her life for poor people. So I remember a story about Teresa. Once Teresa went to a store. It's a very big building and a store in it. And she went to there and to the owner. She asked, like, can you please help me for the purse? Like helping me is this helping purse? I'll help purse with your money. So can you please give me some money? And all of the sudden, the owner spits on her hand. She he spit on her hand. What she did you know? She drained out the spit in her dress, and she asked one second, like, "Okay, you gave this for me, and now can you please give for the poor?" See how the mentality of the resides. Even he spit on her. She said, "It's for me. Okay, I can take this as for me." But what about the poor people? You can help them. She asked in other hand. So out of the sudden, the owner broke out and he helped. He gave many things like money, food, dresses to poor people. So this is the mentality of Teresa. She is so charity minded. So that's why uh, in twenty sixteen, a Pope Francis announced her as a saint. In twenty sixteen, Pope Francis announced her as a saint. So this is all about Mother Teresa. Next, Kalpana Chawla. Kalpana Chawla was an Indian American astronaut and the first Indian woman to go into space. She was born in Karnal, Punjab, in 1962. She was the youngest among her three siblings. After completing her school education, she went to the University of Punjab for further studies. After this, she went to the University of Texas for further studies in aerospace engineering. See here, Kalpana Chawla was born in India, 
in 1962 after that she pursued her studies here like school education and uh, basic education bachelor degrees and after that uh, she went to university of texas that's in america and for it's for her further more study in that field like masters aerospace engineering then Kalpana Chawla joined NASA and her dream of going to space finally came true. NASA is an American organization that does research about space and organizes space travel. In 1997, in her first space mission, she traveled 10.67 million kilometers equal to going 252 times around Earth. The second mission was in 2003 but this mission met with an accident so here we see that uh, yeah she joined nasa nasa is more like our indian version uh, isro it's like their version space research center and there uh, she, she had a dream came true like uh, her dream was like she wants to be there in space Uh, so she first time she went in nineteen ninety seven, and then second mission was planned like two thousand three, and there but this mission met with an accident. Kalpana Chawla and her other crew members were returning to Earth in space shuttle called Columbia. So the the very sad part is like they are returning from space. They did their job, their duties there. and then they are returning from space the space shuttle broke into many pieces upon entering the its atmosphere and the accident killed all the crew members after the accident many countries introduced memorial to honor her india has renamed satellite metsat 1 as kalpana 1 NASA dedicated a supercomputer in her memory. Kalpana Chawla often used to visit her hometown and motivated young girls to follow their dreams. She once said, "The path from dreams to success does exist. May you have the vision to find it, the courage to get on to it, and the perseverance to follow it." See here, the main thing in Kalpana Chawla. This thing is like dream, dream, dream. There's dream big, and you can get your dreams come true. So the vocabulary here is perseverance. Perseverance in the sense continuous attempt to try to achieve a particular aim despite difficulties. Even though you are getting failure, it's okay. You can try one more. The failure is the is the thing only no to for us to try one more thing. That's all. So this is all about Kalpana Chawla. Next is A P J Abdul Kalam. Doctor A P J Abdul Kalam was the eleventh president of India. He belonged to a simple family from Rameshwaram in Tamil Nadu. His father was a boat owner. When Kalam was a young boy, he sold the newspapers to increase his family income. He completed his schooling from Rameshwaram Elementary School in 1954. He graduated in physics from Sir Joseph's College in Tiruchirappalli. So here you can see that. He is his background is very normal and he is from lower middle class family. He never thought that I can have a dream. Yeah, even though he is from a poor family, he thought that I can dream and I can achieve my dreams. So he graduated from Saint Joseph's College in Tirchi and graduated in physics, especially the subject is physics. Then. After completing his higher studies in aerospace engineering, see he is also like Alpana Chawla. Dr. Kala worked as a scientist with the Defence Research and Development Organisation, that is DRDO, and the Indian Space Research Organisation. I said that Alpana Chawla worked there in NASA and the Indian version is ISRO. He was closely involved in the development of military missiles and thus. came to be known as the missile man of india dr kalam was honored with bharat ratna in 
the dignity with which he treated the people walking with him, his love for children and his simplicity and humility made him a true people's president. His life was like he worked, he dedicated totally to people like uh, finding many things. He's a scientist and uh, he dedicated his life to the science field. And then he worked on many missiles that India made and uh, honored with Bharat Ratna in 1997. So the dignity with which he treated the people walking with him, his love for children and the simplicity and humility made him a true people's presidency. He is also a, a president of India once. Next, the thing is uh, humility in the sense of his, uh, his uh, humbleness. He is so humble and down to earth, no proud. So he is a down to earth man. And he also contributed many to a country and the young minds. Especially, I remember a quote of Abdul Kalam. He always used to say, like, dream big, dream, dream, dream. So, this is all about Abdul Kalam. Today, we saw about the famous people from ancient times, medieval times, and the present times. So, in ancient times, we saw people like Ashoka and Aryabhata. And in medieval times, we saw about Akbar and Rajaraja the first. And next, like uh, present times, we saw about Mother Teresa, Kalpana Chawla and APJ Abdul Kazam. So these people we saw as a famous people. So this is all about this chapter and next class, let's see about, let's practice an exercise part. Today's warm-up exercise as well as activity is, you have to tell me about your role model or your inspiration. Hi, let's discuss your doubts in Zoom session and as well as your role model things. Bye students, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.